the main way in which CNC4 varies from previous CNC titles, including CNC3, is that we've placed a lot more emphasis on player choice throughout the campaign, throughout the game in general. And that breaks down into a couple different categories. There's our class system. And so with the choice between offense, defense, or support, you can really approach the missions in, in your own way with the progression system that we have. So in your offense class, you may have unlocked a certain number of battle tanks that you can use to make a really good ground assault. Or if you're support and you've unlocked some of those cool support powers, you can kind of hang back and use those to your advantage. So by having a lot of different ways to approach the missions uh, with our class-based system, I think that's really what sets it apart from CNC3, where you really only had kind of the tank blob gameplay to go with. Another one of the challenges in being a single-player mission designer in Command & Conquer 4 was figuring out how to make the game fun for all three different classes. The first thing to know is that any of our missions can be used uh, with any of, of the classes and you'll still be able to complete that mission. But you'll have to approach it in a very different way depending on what class you choose. You don't you know, make it more difficult for yourself by picking support instead of offense or defense. It's actually been one of the key focuses of our development. In fact, during the mission, if you don't like how it's working out with your chosen class, you can um, auto-destruct your crawler and respawn as a different class. And it's a great way for our campaign to really use any of those classes and approach the mission, but they all have their different play styles which you have to take advantage of. Rest, my son. Your suffering has not been in vain. So how do GDI and Nod differ in terms of campaign in CNC4? Well, we've actually taken an approach that's a little bit old school, where either way, when you start the campaign, you start out as a GDI commander. Shortly into the campaign, you are presented with a choice. Do you stay with GDI? Welcome, Commander. Or do you realign yourself with Kane? The hub is ours. And so the missions are going to be a bit different in that way, that the Nod ones are going to be revealing a bit more of what's really happening. Next time, puppet. Next time. Whereas the GDI ones is a bit more on the side of what Kane wanted the world to think and what Kane wanted the world to really believe is going on. But as you play through the Nod campaign, you'll realize it's a bit of a twist about what Kane's root plan really is. It's epic. It is the conclusion. And it doesn't mean that the universe is over, but this particular storyline, the storyline that began in Tib Dawn, is coming to a close. And along the way, you will learn some significant things about Cain. What does Cain mean when he talks about ascension? You know, how long has he actually been on Earth, and, and why is he here? What influence has he had uh, in that time? So I don't want to spoil things, but if you play through both the GDI and the Nod campaign, you're really going to have that complete uh, answer to, to what the whole saga is about. So player progression is one of the really cool things in Command & Conquer 4. So as you start off the game, when you just install it and you're kind of starting your profile from scratch, uh, you're, you are going to be a bit limited in what you have, but as you, if you, as you play through the campaign, you'll be unlocking all new uh, weapon components, all new units and powers and structures. And the thing that's cool about that is say maybe you're playing along as offense for a while and really having fun with that class, and then you level up and say you unlock some new structures for the defense class. You're then kind of compelled to go try defense and see what they're all about. And then you unlock some powers and you're compelled to go try support and you see why that's a really cool and unique class. So it's a great way to have you kind of jump between these different classes without overwhelming the player from the start. Player progression isn't limited at all in the single player campaign, which is an especially awesome thing if you're having trouble with one of the single player missions. You can take it down a notch in difficulty, get some new toys, and then go back in and just roll over everybody. Ultimately, I think our single player missions this time around are going to be very different, they're going to be very unique, and they're going to be very interesting. What you're going to see that's different is you're going to see a class system that lets you really choose how you approach a mission, a player progression system that gives you, rewards you for playing the game, and then you're also going to see AI-driven missions where it's less about what the designer wants you to do and more about how you use the various tactical options we give you to achieve your goals. And these all work together to create a much more flexible, intriguing campaign experience. And there's an awesome story too. So we're very excited to bring the conclusion of the Tiberium Saga with Command & Conquer 4. We've really put a lot of heart, a lot of effort into finalizing this chapter, uh, really putting that into the single player campaign and those missions. Uh, we're going to be on shelves March 16th and I hope you check it out. You have done well.